This is Eric Campbell. You can find me at ericcampbell.com. This is Brian Walker with Image Armor Pretreatment and Inks. Johnny Shell with SGIA. Scott Fresner with T-Biz and Network International. And you're listening to Two Regular Guys Podcast. 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 Hosted by Terry Combs and Aaron Montgomery. If you're not listening, you're missing out. All right. Well, welcome into the show today, everybody. It is Friday, November 2nd, 2018. I'm Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me at AaronMontgomery.info. Uh, today, we're going to be talking sublimation. So I've got the guest to have when it comes to sublimation. As you can see here, if you're watching the live show, I've got Jimmy Lamb here with me. <laughs> it is you I'm talking about, sir. Oh, Come on. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh... I don't always tease you. <laughs> well, it's always great to be here. I'm finally going to be co-host again. I think it's because I made you feel guilty. The last time I saw you, I'm like, hey, it's been a long time since I've been on the show. <laughs> Boom. Was, of course, okay, you give oh me like boy. 30 seconds notice. Hey, by the way, we're doing a show today yeah. at 11. Would you like to be on there? And by the way, it's 1055. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, that's why we started two minutes late. You know, I had to give you a second to sit down and absolutely and, uh, get settled in. So <laughs> now, now, do I get another pair of the two regular guys socks for being here? I mean, I take those with me everywhere. I don't necessarily nice. wear them, but I show them to everybody. You okay. know, it's, like, it's right. like a trophy, you know, you nice. hold it up and say, hey, check this <laughs> out. <So. laughs> well, you know, hey, we can work that out. You definitely uh, will see how you do today if you earn your keep so oh, to speak i gotta earn the socks okay. <laughs> i want something different this time um all right you know, like a, a wine bag carrier with something in it oh hey you know what i can do that too all right okay. we, we can make this happen so okay so, uh just to let everybody in on our our inside joke here so to speak um yeah i did ask jimmy last second to join me here today terry is off at uh, the nbm's charlotte show and uh, the show we had scheduled, uh, the, the guest could not make it because she had a passing. So um, we're, our thoughts and prayers are with her, but uh, we still wanted to talk sublimation. So I got Jimmy here. Jimmy, uh, for those that don't know who you are, which is probably few and far between, uh, but there may be a couple people listening. And can you tell people a little bit about yourself real quick? Um, I hang out with um, Aaron and Terry, so they let me be on their show. Um, <laughs> So anyway, uh, I am manager of education at Sawgrass. So I, I go around and speak and talk and do you know webinars and all that kind of stuff. But I've been in this industry like, um, geez, you know, 25 years. But I started when I was five. Okay. okay? So do the math, right? <laughs> nice. Right. Yeah. So figure that what out. What are we doing for your 30th? Oh, I don't know. And, um, <laughs> But I started as an embroiderer too. I mean, not everybody knows that, but I mean, I've spent many, many years as an embroiderer and, and my knowledge level in the world of embroidery is probably greater than it is in sublimation. So, uh, but, you know, I had the opportunity to get involved with sublimation and in the development, you know, uh, the chemistry. Uh, that's one of the really cool things that Sawgrass has done is the education they've given me on, um, you know, digital processes and inks and all that kind of stuff. Because it's, you know, it, when you're using sublimation, you just want the, to, to hit a button that says print. Yeah. I didn't go to the heat press, you know, but what we're doing all the time is working with all the chemistry goes behind the scenes. And, uh, it's, it's a lot that goes into it. It really, really is. So, um, at, in a nutshell, I guess is what I do. Nice. There you go. Well, that, that, uh, that helps everybody know. So yes, uh, Jimmy is definitely a go-to for me. Uh, I've got some great folks in the embroidery world around me from Eric Campbell to Andrea Bomarito, but anytime there's a, a hat question or something about embroidery with hats for sure. I know you did a, a probably a, a metric ton of hats at least from uh, the conversation. I, I gotta we've tell, had. You, tell you a real <laughs> quick little, little story. Okay. Um, years ago, ISS asked me to do a workshop on cap embroidery. So I'm going to give you four hours. I said, all I need is 15 minutes. And they're like, what? And they said, that's one of the hardest things in the embroidery world. I said, that's because they just don't know how to do it. I mean, <laughs> the, the reality is I have two rules that solve 90 to 100% of your problems. And I said, I can actually cover that in about five minutes. All right. Uh, but I had to make it last an hour and a half. They decided to make it a regular class, you know. Yeah. So, but it is. I mean, most embroiderers really, really struggle with hats. Um, and, and there's, it's not a secret to make every hat work. It's a secret to keep you from killing yourself. How's that? <laughs> That's perfect. No, I love it. And we won't give away your secret sauce. We'll have to figure out how uh, to yeah, monetize you have to that. Schedule yeah. that. 
Yeah, we'll schedule that one. Yeah, that made for, better socks. Yeah, much better socks. Maybe uh, maybe a shirt or something, you know, maybe a two regular guys Look shirt. Look at that. Yeah, my okay. shirt doesn't have that. But. Yeah, we'll, we'll work on that. So okay. um, good stuff there. All right, well, we got some people checking in with us here this morning. Okay. Uh, so let's say hi to a few folks here real quick, Jimmy. We've got Martha Taylor joining us. Martha, good morning. Hello, How Martha. And uh, Cindy Miles, uh, thank you for tuning in, Cindy. Hopefully you're doing great. I got Rich, and I'm not even going to try your last name, Rich, because I am the butcher of all names, uh, wide and far. So, cool. <laughs> you want to try it, Jimmy? Can you see it there? Uh, I, I can't see the name. I see like okay. little pictures and comments. So gotcha. I'm afraid right. to click too much because it, then it'll be like a blank screen. Nice, nice. Yeah, I understand. So, I understand. Uh, we got Alan Howe joining us. I see us. that. That just right. appeared. Alan Howe. Right. Hello, there everyone. We got Jim joining us this morning, uh, this except is Aaron system. and Terry. Uh, this, well, Aaron's here, but uh, <laughs> yeah. this is a new it. system since the last time I did this. This is interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, definitely. there's Kitson. <laughs> there's Mr. <laughs> Greg Kitson that. from Mind's Eye Graphics. Good yep. morning, Greg. Good to see you this morning. And then uh, the gentleman we heard in the introduction, yep, Mr. Eric. Eric Campbell. So, Eric. Oh, we've got everybody checking in. Mary Ann. All right. Thank you, guys. We appreciate everybody joining us this morning. We're going to have a great conversation here with Jimmy about sublimation in just one moment. Um, I wanted to cover a couple of news. Oh, Vic Autry. Well, I don't want to miss anybody. We'll, we'll come back and catch anybody we missed here. Careful but, uh, now. You're going to get a lot of people, and then you're going to run out of time saying hello to everyone. So That's hello, true. everyone. Good hello, that? everybody. We'll cover it now. There we go. <laughs> um, but, Jimmy, I did want to talk about a couple of news items that I saw that I uh, just want to kind of keep people up to speed on that I think are um, interesting to our industry. Uh, first one was an investigation into the, whether the sale of Cafe Press to Snapfish is fair. Um, there's some attorneys trying to figure this out. So uh, a notice was posted on October 17th stating that the investigation addresses whether the board at Cafe Press, quote, breached their fiduciary duties to stockholders by falling, failing to adequately shop the company before agreeing to enter into a transaction and whether Snapfish is underpaying for Cafe Press shares. And uh, yeah, if you look at what they were trading at and what Cafe uh, Press sold it for, there definitely seems to be a little uh, cause for concern. So um, very interesting stuff to keep an eye on there in our industry. So uh, and we'll post a link to that in the show notes. And then the other thing that I saw, Jimmy, that just kind of was really kind of interesting to me, uh, AI, artificial intelligence, quality control continues, uh, textiles, history of automation. So, um, over in Hong Kong, there is a loom that is using, uh, AI to try to do, um, Basically, they're looking for fabric defects and things like that. So be interesting to see, you know, at what stage, you know, robots come into the sublimation world, for example, and things like right. that. So um, I'll get you know, a link and, to that. And not to sidetrack, but checkered looms are really cool. And most people <laughs> have never seen something like that in operation. I've actually seen the early ones that use the, the paper punch cards, you uh, know, the huh. computer cards with the holes in them. Uh, and, yeah, and, I'm not familiar uh, with them at all. So. <laughs> Some of those same looms are still in operation. They may not be using paper, but I mean, it's, it's fascinating to see a loom work so huh. different from everything else that we do. But yet it actually make it becomes a decorated product. It's just, you know, woven into the the fabric, the design. So it's pretty cool stuff. So wow. now AI in there. Wow. Yeah. You know, of course, yeah. when I see AI, I think Adobe Illustrated. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's, so it throws me off. You know, <laughs> in in this case, it means artificial intelligence. So, uh, Got it. <laughs> so like for I, me, my intelligence is artificial. Got it. All right. <laughs> you are. We'll talk about why you're an expert later. But uh, oh, geez. We, we, <laughs> I love stealing that, by the way. So I appreciate you uh, allowing that. I, okay. I try to give you credit, but I don't all the time. So, anyways, um. Jimmy, one other thing I want everybody to stay tuned to the very end of the show. Eric Campbell uh, put together a great five things for us. It's called five things you should do to successfully finish 2018. So uh, we love doing five things. It's great talking points. And um, we also love that we uh, have the opportunity to bring you this show since February 2013. Can't believe that. Wow. We're almost to our seventh year. So we're, we're wrapping up our sixth season here. In fact, we'll talk about this a little bit towards the end, but we're just starting our sixth uh, Reggie Awards, which uh, you've been involved with before, Jimmy. And um, 
you know, as as you guys know that uh, listen to us or watch us here, we avoid the rants, the lecturing, the selling, all of that kind of fun stuff. We're here to have some fun and, and provide some really good information about things that can help your business. So um, we would love for you to check out our website over at tworegularguys.com. We have show notes from everything that we've shared over the nearly seven years of shows and um, contact us page. Lots of great information over there. Uh, links to all the things we talk about in each show. And uh, you can rewatch or re-listen to old shows back there as well. So um, like you guys uh, said, uh, like we talked about earlier, those of you that are tuning in live here on Facebook, uh, we love your comments. And I'm as Jimmy reminded me, don't say hello to everybody, but uh, without a blanket <laughs> statement, so <laughs> not like that, a blanket okay. statement. All right. All right. Okay. But, but no, we would love to have your interaction. You know, I'll I'll uh, give Jimmy an extra shirt to stay a little long if we have to today. So uh, jump in there. Your questions, comments, insights, everything on today's topic. We're uh, excited to do that. And then, uh, Jimmy, before we dive into our topic here, I do need to do one more housekeeping thing here. Sure. Uh, the good folks at SGA have been a, a sponsor for uh, the entire year of 2018. And um, their latest and greatest event is, uh, I'm going to pop it up on the uh, screen here, is ThreadX. And uh, it's going to be fantastic. Actually, Terry and I are excited about attending again this year. Uh, Ricardo Crespo is going to be the MC at the upcoming ThreadX 19 happening February 17th through the 19th, uh, 2018 in San Diego, California. The speaker list this year is going to be amazing. So if you missed 2018, you don't want to miss 2019. Check out speakers like Ricardo, uh, Benny Gold, a San Francisco-based streetwear brand and boutique, and keynote speaker Aaron Draplin, who is a design wizard. Uh, if you register early enough, I think there's still some spaces available. Um, you can attend a hands-on workshop with Mr. Draplin, uh, Aaron Draplin, and uh, that will be great. Nearly um, very small group interaction, really learn some great details from him. So we cannot wait for February to get here. If you head over to ThreadX registration at threadxconference.com, and that's what you see up on our screen right here, it is going to be a fantastic show. So I'm um, looking forward to that. Jimmy, are you ready to talk sublimation? Did I give you enough uh, time to settle in and I don't think any of these questions are beyond you here, so I'm not real worried about it. But anyway. uh, okay, perfect, perfect. <laughs> All right, well, Jimmy, today I wanted to talk about cashing in on the holidays. Unfortunately, whether we like it or not, the holidays are upon us. We are in November now, and uh, in fact, I've already seen Black Friday sales starting. So wild and craziness going on there. But uh, are we too late to cash in on the holidays if we're a sublimator, or, or is there still time? You're never too late. Um, some of the approaches that you might be using could be on the tail end. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. um, you know, one thing that, that so many times we talk about the holidays, people are just, they get immediately thinking about themed products. You know, it's yeah. got Santa Claus and Christmas trees and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that all falls under the domain of personalization and decor, right? Yeah. But, yeah. but the reality during the holidays, you start thinking about gift giving and not necessarily a gift that's been wrapped up in paper and put under a tree. And that's, of course, sort of a Christmas celebration. And, yeah. and I don't mean to demean because we do have other celebrations, Hanukkah's going on and some mm -hmm. other things, right? But it's, there's a lot of gift giving. And one of the things is corporate gift giving because a lot mm -hmm. of corporations give gifts to their staff okay. and they give gifts to their clients. Okay. Definitely. Now, getting a little tail end on those guys because they like to go ahead and get that stuff ordered in, you know. Yeah. Um, but just a couple of real quick notes if you, if you want to go down the corporate path, for example. Yeah. yeah. Um, you definitely got to be hitting them up right now. Okay. okay. You got to be doing it right now. And, and a lot of times it's, it's, I hate to say it, but it's promotional products yeah. because they, they give a gift. You want to give it a gift to somebody that they can use. That's not a piece of junk. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that they give good quality, usable gifts and then maybe tuck in real small in the corner somewhere, their brand. So the reality is if they go back to their clients and say, Hey, thanks for spending all the money with us. We're a computer software company. We're going to give you a laptop sleeve. That's got, you know, sublimation on it and down here in the corner, maybe the name of the business. You know, the client probably appreciates that. And they're getting some brand awareness too. And it's the same with the employees. But the rule number one there is don't give trinkets and trash because yeah. it sends a bad message. In, in fact, in my mind, it's better to give no gift than give a cheap gift. Mm. Okay. 
That, yeah. That's something to think about. But the other aspect about doing decor, personalization, <clears throat> gifts to the family, no, nah, we're fine. I mean, because a lot of people like me, we were <laughs> like, no, no, not yet. You know, like, like <laughs> yep. Halloween night. Halloween night, I was watching a business decorate for Christmas outside. <laughs> There's people around trick-or-treating, and these guys are hanging up Christmas lights. That was kind of wow. crazy, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, no, when we get into that marketplace, you know, the personal, personalized products, yeah. decor products, you're probably – you still a little behind the eight ball. I mean, but if you're quick and, and out there and doing what you need to do, you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, Jimmy, I want to circle back to what you said about the corporate clients there. I, I think that's a huge tip and I don't want people to miss that, that, you know, you don't want to be giving, like I said, the trinkets and trash, you know, the cheap right. stuff, the cheap, you know, promotional product stuff. Um, and I think that's a great way for people to go in and sell these things to, to mm -hmm. folks, you know, that perceived value of it being a, a higher dollar value thing, you know, and you talked about the personalization with some of the family gifts, but I've actually seen programs where people are doing that same personalization, variable data kind of thing for corporate clients oh, yeah. too. That, that's and, even better because yeah. it, it, it sends a really powerful message that you got a, a coffee mug or whatever with your name on there because that right. means you're somebody instead of just a number. Sure, sure. Yeah, I was actually involved in a project last year that was uh, for Twitter, for employees at Twitter, and they were doing this big thing around emojis. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So all of these people had had the emojis and um, had their own emoji, and they all got a mug. And and they went one step further is is they got a set of mugs. They got one of like a, a corporate mug right. that was you know, kind of the brand, but then their fun emoji mug too, with the, the brand on the back. Um, and then that was sent in a nice package and they actually asked us to hold on to them and send them uh, kind of last minute FedEx overnight for it to even to have there. that. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted it to have that, you know, you're really important, right. really special feel to it. And when you get a, a FedEx express package at your door, you know, you, you tend to feel right. special about it. So the, the really cool thing about a mug is you can, the other thing besides just sublimation is actually putting something in it. I don't mean liquid, but, you know, what if you put inside of it, uh, you know, like a, a gourmet coffee, you know, package, yeah. or you put inside of it gourmet hot chocolate package. And, you know, a lot of times people then they'll, they'll put that, you know, that, that the, the cellophane, like the pink cellophane and wrap it and tie a ribbon or something. But I mean, in other words, you, you really, you add a lot more to the, um, the, the perceived value. Yeah. You know, it comes in. It's not just a mug. It's got a mug with, you know, some other things going on in it. And and that's just another way to present it to that corporate client that may or may not want anything in there. But, I mean, it's like you're showing them somewhere. So, wow, you know, and it's, you know, put their name. But, yeah, personalized promotional products is actually a trend. Uh, yeah. And a lot of people can't do it because um, they, they, it just doesn't fit with their production, you know, because the fact that everyone's going to have a separate name on there. Right. Yeah. But um, one other thing, one other thing to keep in mind too, yeah. and is if you're doing these kind of gifts for staff for for um, clients, wow. stay away from that theme because again, with all the different ethnic backgrounds of, of everyone in this country, and you know the, the different religious preferences and stuff, if you go and give the wrong person a, a mug with you know a Christmas tree or Santa Claus or something on there, it could be offensive, and you didn't mean to. Yeah. So the best thing is stay away from the theme just present a gift of some kind you sure, know? sure because it's a gift giving season and i think we 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 like almost every celebration this time of the year involves gift giving so sure. I, I think we're safe yeah no i agree that's a that's a really good point and a good thing to to think about and for those of you out there making stuff and you know you said the personalization not being able to do that and that, i think that's really what one of sublimation's true strengths is is that ability to make everything <clears throat> this different even though, you know, your product, <coughs> excuse me, your production is going to be the same. So I'm going to cough to death over here for a second. Yeah. I'll ask you another uh, question. Technical difficulties coming over from Aaron Montgomery at this <laughs> yeah. point. Uh, he'll be back shortly. <laughs> Hopefully. I don't think, and nobody's here to uh, <laughs> help me out. I'll have to call 911 on my own. All right. I'm okay. I'm going to live. Uh, I'll call 911, but it won't help you because they'll come to my house instead of yours. So. <laughs> okay. Whew. All right. I'm going to make it then. Ah. All right, Jimmy, I want you to talk to me a little bit about the blanks then. You know, you talked about that where we kind of get into this theme, yeah. but what kind of blanks do we need to be looking at? Maybe something. <coughs> yeah, you go. go cough and I'll talk. Okay. Um, 
you know, first of all, anything can be a gift. That's the cool thing about sublimation. We, we pretty much define what the product is by what we put on it. But we're not going to set up our inventory to be the same as the dealers we buy it from, okay, because we're not in that business. Uh, so it's, it's kind of important to feel around and see, get an idea, of, you know, who do you think you're actually going to be selling this to and, and what kind of, you know, methodology. I mean, are we doing personalized products? Are we doing home decor products? Or are we doing corporate gifts? You know, a lot of times too with a corporate gift, we're giving somebody something related. It's a lifestyle item related to what the corporation does. I mean, you know, a health club is probably going to give a different set of gifts out than a bank. Okay. Mm -hmm. So those I wouldn't really go with until I'm kind of, you know, narrowing it down. But I'm telling you, everybody uses mugs. I yeah. mean, a mug is the top thing out there. And if you buy in bulk, you get a better price, you know. So, <laughs> and the thing about mugs, you'll always sell them. Even if you don't sell them all in Christmas, you'll get them all sold. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that's important because if you can get a really good price, bulk up on those things. If you don't sell them all this season, I guarantee you over the next few months, you'll still get rid of them. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, those are some of the best things to use. I mean, there's plenty of other things. If you're going to do the personalization route, you know, look at Christmas stockings. Those are always very popular because we can, especially with children, we put a picture of the child on there and add the date so that the Christmas stocking is no good next year. So they need a new one, you know, so <laughs> you always think about putting dates on stuff. Uh, Christmas ornaments, again, if you're going to be doing um, decor, personalization, theme products, uh, there's some cool Christmas ornaments out there. You know, it used to be that they were all flat, you know, it was yeah. like my hand. And yeah. now we got the balls that have the little piece that comes off that you can actually sublimate, put back on. And to me, that looks much nicer on a tree. I mean, it just, yeah. it, it, that's, that's what I think of, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, pets, don't think about, forget about pets. Pets is huge anytime. And so you might stock up. Again, do you have an outlet for pets? I mean, that's kind of what I'm thinking about is like, Eh, you know, I don't know if I can push the pet thing. Then don't stock up on it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but you, you kind of, again, you got to get a feel for who you're selling to um, and then listen and then reorder quickly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then write that down for next year. You know, we, we it's, it's a little tough. But while we're doing sublimation, let's, let's talk about a couple other things real quick. Make sure you got enough paper, okay? Okay. okay. Um, make sure you got enough ink. And, and I'm not one that's going to go tell you to go buy you know, dozens of cartridges of ink because you don't need to have dozens of cartridges of ink if you're a small operation, yeah. but you can read the ink meters on the front of your printer. Yeah. And the last thing you want is that you're up late trying to finish an important order and boop, you just ran out of ink, right? So you want to keep up with that. Keep an eye on that. Cause remember you got to order it. You don't want to order it next day air. Yeah. You know, you, you want, unless you can get free shipping next day or which you probably cannot. Um, but who knows? Uh, so, you know, keep an eye on that so that it's ready. So you can change it out the exact second you need to, but here's my number one tip, an extra waste ink tank. People forget they, some people don't even know they have them in their printer. If they're new, most people don't even know they have a waste ink tank. It's down below those cartridges. If it's a sawgrass printer and when that fills up, the printer stops. OK, <laughs> they're not very expensive. If you don't have a spare already, go out right now, pick up the phone and buy one from your dealer. So it's just yeah. sitting there. I, I, I can't I think it's around thirty five dollars, but I'm not positive. So I apologize if it's more. I don't <laughs> apologize if it's less. OK, um, <laughs> you so, can send the, the extra is, to Jimmy if it's less. Know, <laughs> if you're using a small grass system, we have very easy, removable waste ink tanks. But let me tell you something. Every printer out there has waste ink. I mean, even the wide format printers, you know, mm -hmm. um, our, our VJ628 doesn't have a, a waste ink tank that's removable. You actually turn a valve and drain it into a container. But everybody mm -hmm. needs to be aware of waste ink. You know, how's yeah. it handled? Because that'll stop a printer in a heartbeat. Yeah, no, those are really great tips. And I've always told people that, uh, you know, as soon as you put that cartridge in, get another one ordered, you know, and yeah. just always have one extra there. And like I said, you don't need to have stacks upon stacks but but have that and that's a great tip about the wasting thing i think that's uh that's huge and that was 
when I was working with a distributor before, Jimmy, that was uh, definitely the number one thing that got overnighted was the waste ink tank. <laughs> I, I, got, I found that out the hard way when I was doing Skills USA a couple of years ago. <laughs> and, and there was a situation with a waste tank. So nice. I learned that one the hard way. Nice, nice. Yeah, let's keep the money in our pockets. FedEx and UPS will be just fine without right. uh, our our mistakes. So we'll, we'll have plenty of other things we can overnight. So, And then, Jimmy, I wanted to go back real too, quick, too, about the mug. I loved your feedback about the mugs. And one of the thing I think is worth noting is you should definitely be stocking up on mugs in general right now, regardless of the holiday season, I think, because with the tariffs and stuff going on uh, and, and kind of in flux right now, I think that's going to be uh, an item that we see some some issues with. You know, most ceramic mugs are imported from from China. So uh, just keep an eye on that. I mean, we're talking, you know, I've seen not only with the tariffs, but then because everybody's rushing to try to get all this stuff in before the big tariffs go into place, uh, shipping costs are going through the roof right now too. Right. So, um, anyways, just a little and side it also note turns there. into supply and demand. Everyone's yeah. rushing to buy it. Hey, you can raise the prices on it just because there's a big demand. So <laughs> keep you you get them in your stock, and you know the price. Then you know yeah. you're not worrying about That's that. It. So. Um, all right, Jimmy, I, one, you're always out and about and you get to talk to lots of people in, in your travels, I believe. So tell me a little bit about maybe some unique things that you've seen, some things that have stood out to you that maybe we could share with people. Well, um, you know, from in terms of marketing, something that an, um, an ASI guy showed me years ago, um, I was one of his suppliers. And what he and his wife did since it's just a two-person company, every mm -hmm. year in October, they would go to a local hotel and they'd rent a, a large meeting room and they'd, they'd set up, you know, tables right down through the center and they would cover it with great corporate gift ideas, okay? And then what they do is it wasn't like you, you came for a presentation. It was drop in whenever you wanted. They were there from like 9 in the morning till 9 at night for a whole week. Wow. And they invited every customer they had to drop in whenever they wanted. They invited every customer they didn't have and wanted <laughs> to have. Uh, they had, you know, like wine and cheese. And, you know, the idea was people could come in and browse and talk about it on their schedule. And I think a big key part was going into the evening because a lot of times people were coming after hours. Sure. So I was always impressed with what they did to, to really get to that corporate market. Um, if you're If you're doing more of the personalization and – you know, trying to get retail in most cases or a yeah. lot of cases, yeah. um, that's a whole totally different ball game because now you're talking about going to individuals. And, you know, one of the recommendations I've seen I share is uh, trying to – everybody's running their business a little different. But, I mean, if you had a retail store, great, and then you got – you're right there. If you're working online, like so many people are, I mean, we got to ask though, how effective is our online site? Cause there's a lot that aren't, but that's yeah. a whole nother story. Yes. Yeah, um, we don't have time for that today. Yeah, but let's <laughs> That you can at least have a place online where people can see if they you can't buy, they need to have e-commerce. Um, I'm still a believer. A lot of times we got to put flyers out in front of people. I mean, okay. you know, everybody all the time saying, no, oh, no, you know, everything digital. It's not necessarily true. Look at where people wait. When people have to wait for something like a doctor, you go to the doctor. We always got to wait the doctor, right? <laughs> you know, what they? they have magazines, you know, for you to read, yeah. right? Yeah. So what if they're flyers there talking about all these great Christmas products, you know, and, and hair salons and uh, professional service offices? I mean, you start thinking about places like that. Can you actually go in with, with a decent flyer that is just like, wow, in your face, some really cool looking stuff? And then it links back to your, you know, website because as soon as they read it, they're going to pull their phone out and they're going to mm -hmm. edit it and go there, right? Yeah. Um, but the idea is, when people have to sit and wait, they're looking for something to occupy their time, and a lot of times they're sitting on their phone. That's all they're doing. But people still do look at printed materials. So, I mean, if you have the connections and you can actually make flyers, which we can all do, and put them out places where you know you can try to direct people in. What I'm trying to say is, how do we direct people in? Now, yeah, a lot of people already have a really good digital marketing plan. I mean, they're all over Facebook and Instagram and, you know, and they have a whole bunch of followers. And again, you, you want to start putting the ideas in front of those followers. But we always got to be thinking about bringing new people in, too. And, and you know, sometimes we go back to the older style way, ways to get them in. You know, that's yeah. that's just the way that you got to do it. Now, if you are wanting to read, you know, another thing, this doesn't matter. It's actually individuals or corporate. 
take that same flyer and put it in every single package that you you know send out to a customer with finished products. Every time a customer calls, make sure you remind them Christmas is coming up. And you got all kinds of cool things. Go check it out. Have the conversation. You know, just constantly drill it into people every time you have a connection with them. Hey, it's the holiday season. We can do all these really cool things. Hey, have you seen our personalized coffee mugs? Yeah. You know, and it, it just, you know, if you're always hitting them, that's getting that information out. And nice. and that's what you got to do. Nice. No, that's a that's a great tip. And like I said, that that touch point, how many times can you make contact to keep it in their mind? Because you know, inevitably you're going to find the right time when they are actually right. ready. You know, you may have talked to them 12 times and been blown off 12 times. And it's that 13th time where, Oh, you know what? Yeah, I do need that coffee mug. Yep. Thanks for reminding me again. You know, so don't, don't give up on that stuff. Um, you just a made a fantastic point. point about sales, believe it or not. <laughs> okay. Um, when they're ready. Okay. That is such a great point. You're right, man. You, you, you get blown off 10 or 12 times and you're like, what am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. They're just not ready. Sure. So, you know, anyway, nice, uh, that, nice that's a great thing for people to remember just because they didn't buy today doesn't mean they won't buy tomorrow. But, you know, or, or the other saying is you should have been here yesterday. <laughs> okay. so, <laughs> um, but, but it, it, yeah, that's, that's such a good point. Nice. Nice. Yes. And then I'm going to give a quick marketing tip myself here, Jimmy, if you don't mind me jumping uh, in and pretending. I'm, like, I'm the guest. Okay. All right. Well, but you're also the co-host. So, oh, that's you know. true. So yeah, that's right. That's a good point. You have to nod and pretend like I'm saying something smart. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, so here's, here's one thing that I've been kind of seeing a lot lately and, and hearing about lately is, and I think it's something that's really underserved every industry, but especially in our industry is, we don't spend enough time with the strategy for our word of mouth marketing. And, and a lot of times that holiday season, you know, we've talked about websites and, you know, we haven't really talked much about social, but you could talk about social and all that other stuff, but all that stuff is really driven by that word of mouth marketing. It may not be me having a direct conversation with somebody. It could be on a Facebook live or it could be me or review or something like that, but your business should set up a strategy for your word of mouth marketing. Your customer right. should have, have some way to get the information about the experience out and you should encourage that that interaction so you know think about some of the cool projects you did last year and maybe reach out to those folks and say hey do you mind if you know we share this project you know and and we can promote your you know awareness campaign or whatever at the same time but you're also promoting your business and and giving people ideas of cool yep. things that they can do with what you can do with your sublimation setup so um, that's my tip. Great tip. Yeah. Hey. All right. Good. You're good at this. You're, you, we don't need. I learn from the best. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, make sure I didn't miss any good comments that we need. You know, I've been popping some comments up here and there for people that are watching the video to right. see. But um, just a lot of great affirmations of what we're saying here, Jimmy. So uh, uh, keep that coming, Vic and Eric. Uh, right now. Um, all right, let's see here. Where are we at on our, our rundown here? I'm sure we're looking we're at pricing. Is, yeah, let's do that. I think the next thing that's, that's always a tricky one. Um, I, I speak in vague terms sometimes and people don't like it because most people just want me to tell them what to charge. <laughs> and it, it, if you're of that mindset, you're probably not making as much money as you could because if you get too wrapped up in a formula, a formula is only to calculate a number. It's not necessary to set a price. There is a difference. Um, it's all about perception. And unfortunately, that's tough because what I perceive to be worth a lot, you may not. Yeah. So, you know, we have to work hard at that. But with sublimation, um, I said it earlier, say it again. It's typically what we put on it that defines what it is and what the value is. So you start thinking about things like a photograph. I mean, if you're talking about personalized products and you put a photograph, that of a person or a dog or a cat, sorry, don't yeah. want to offend any pet owners out there or a <laughs> monkey, whatever it is you have. Right. Um, but if you have the, the, the picture of the, the pet or the child or whatever, you immediately raise the perceived value because of the emotional connection. You know, when I tell people they can get $35 for a cell phone cover, it's got a picture of their kid on there. You know, people are like, ah, there's no way. And it's like, yeah, there is way it's worth that to them. It's not worth that to you and me. Cause we don't know the kid, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, in, in the right presentation and, and everything, it, that that really drives you know the value and drives the price. So I find that that most people undercharge in our in our business. Okay. Um, but let's say you know you you 
you're going to try to figure out some pricing. You you want to give people um, reasons. I'm trying to think of the right word I wanted. Anyway, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you want to give them reasons to buy. But, you know, start thinking about packaging things together. Don't try to sell them as single. Okay? okay. It's like package together, you know, some items, maybe of home decor products. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, maybe we got some coasters and a serving tray and coffee mugs. Gee, they all go hand in hand, don't they? Huh. They're all complementary to each other. So you have a set of four mugs with four coasters and a serving tray. Okay. So now you got a whole package and you're putting a package price on it. So the idea is you're always trying to package things together so that you get a bigger sale on each and everything. Now, if you go into something like Black Friday or, uh, excuse me, um, what's cyber Monday, uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. Tuesday, cyber Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever, you know, cause there's so much <laughs> cyber all the time now. Yeah. Um, people are always looking for these great deals and everything else. Uh, you don't have to give away the house. I mean, okay. you know, what I would look at is trying to maybe do a package where you're saying, if you buy, you know, the four mugs, you get the coasters free or something like some, like, I'm not saying that's the right package. What I'm yeah. saying is, um, do something, buy, get this, get that so that you're still making money. Yeah. Um, but also keep in mind that, you know, sometimes it's what we call loss leader and you take a loss or a break even to be able to lead people to other things. So if you're able to say through social media or, or whatever means, get people to come to your site in order to buy that. OK, there's a whole lot involved with that. But yeah, <laughs> but the point is a lot of times they may show up at your site where they never did before because they're such a great deal. Now, once you led them to the site, you can show them all the other great things too. You know, and it's, it, again, if you, if you really do a really cool e-commerce, there's a lot of money involved in setting a site up, I hate to say, but I mean, you, you think of how many times you go to buy something and say, Oh, would you like this too? Would you like this too? You know, sure. especially electronic sites, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's part of that complimentary thing. Even if you can't do e-commerce, you may have, Hey, we got these four great mugs, you know, for this price. If you buy when this time frame, you get the coasters free. And oh, by the way, for another, um, you know, um, twenty bucks or whatever, you get the yeah. serving tray. I mean, yeah. you know, you, you hit them with all these other related things on there. By the way, Vic just made a great comment. Always easier to lower the price than raise the price. Best to start high. I agree, hundred yeah. percent. Um, people have a fear that they're not going to get the job. And it, it, a lot, it comes down to having really great samples. You know, a lot of us great samples because we call them wow, pal. People's eyes go, wow, you know, <laughs> um, and, and then we're, and then your presentation, you know, you don't say, hi, I'm Jimmy. Um, this is what we sell. Um, uh, we, we have good stuff. Um, we, our prices are, are, are really good and my kids need new shoes. And I mean, that's, that's not a sales approach. There's nothing exciting in that whatsoever. Yeah. So it's all in the presentation. It really is. Um, years ago, and people in our industry don't remember, I do. It goes back to my embroidery days. There was a, a woman who's still around, but not in our industry. She's over in the home sewing industry now named Shirley Bird. And actually her name, was she when she was um, married, her name what's say her name was Shirley Bird Housen when she got remarried. So it sounded kind of funny, Shirley Bird Housen. Yeah, okay. Birdhausen, yeah, okay. Birdhausen, yeah. Some, people, some people may remember. I mean, you know, she, she was very active in the commercial industry for a while. And then she went over to the home side and it's still there. Okay. Anyway, Shirley Bird, every single seminar she did, the last thing she said was go home and raise your prices 10%. It's not a whole lot. But her point was, Come hear me again. I'll tell you another 10%. I mean, what she told us, she said, everybody's undercharging. Go home and raise 10%. It's not enough for anybody's going to even look at you. Okay. But if you keep doing it in small increments, you finally get to where you should be. Though I agree with Vic, start high and then come down. Uh, but for those who are afraid, start there and add 10%, add 10%, 10%. I mean, if you sell something for 10 bucks, tomorrow you're selling it for 11. I yeah. mean, how hard is that? You know, sure. who's, who's going to say, I'm not buying from you. That went up a dollar. You know, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Really good point. Yeah, agreed uh, on all sides here. Um, Jim mentioned uh, you need that elevator speech. Yes, uh, he did. And and Mike followed that up with uh, I think a really great point here. People really do sell the product. You can have the greatest widget ever if you end up wet blanketing it. It won't matter how awesome it is. The game is. Hey, over. you changed his words. You said I awesome. Did. I know I what he said. I didn't I, know I if didn't. you were going to say what he said. <laughs> Uh, we, we try to keep it family friendly here. Okay, uh, just saying. 
<laughs> Mike knows all about what goes on. And I know, I know. Mike goes. Mike knows all about what goes on in the podcasting world. Mike's my uh, go-to guy for any editing and podcast stuff that I'm doing. In fact, I'm working with him on another project over on uh, AaronMontgomery.info right now. So uh, excited to cool. announce that soon. But uh, all right, Jimmy. Well, I want to talk about you know. So we talked about some great stuff, some uh, good information, how we market this, some unique ideas. But I also want to help people understand about what kind of things they need to be careful about during the holiday season, you know, not getting caught up in something. What pitfalls should they, they be looking for? Are there any gotchas you should be aware of? Well, one of my number one um, concerns, but it's year round, is copyrights and trademarks. Okay. Because people, there's so many misunderstandings. Um, you know, like if I give it away and don't sell it and, you know, has Mickey Mouse or whatever on it, it's not a violation. That's absolutely not true. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I have a copyright and trademarks attorney. I've been on both <laughs> sides of the law. <laughs> uh, I, I, and I would never, ever suggest I'm ever giving legal advice of any kind because as I tell people, I'm not qualified to give legal advice. Therefore, anything I say can it cannot be held against me in a court of law because you've already been told I'm not qualified to oh, give right. it. However, <laughs> you know, these, I remember in my early days, I had a lady come to, to the house and she wanted, to, she had a nice jacket and she wanted me to put uh, Dale Earnhardt on there and the car number and, you know, and a picture of the car and all this stuff. And I'm like, ma'am, I can't do that. And she's like, what? Well, but it's just for my husband. He's he's the biggest Dale Earnhardt fan, and I'm like I understand that. But I mean, all of Dale Earnhardt's you know materials, trademark, copyrighted, and etc. And she said, but you know, I'm sure he would just be so excited. My husband had this jacket. I said, ma'am, he'd be so excited if your husband had the jacket and paid him for the jacket. Okay, I mean, I can't do it. And she didn't understand. Well, can you just put Dale Earnhardt? I said, unless you can show me a driver's license that says your husband's name is Dale Earnhardt, I'm not putting it on there because his name is actually trademarked. OK, so, you know, and, and and she didn't understand that, you know, so when you live in NASCAR country, you get that stuff all the time. You know, they they you get, it's weird, too, because a lot of times they just want the number of the car. Well, is that really trademarked? You can't really trademark a number. You can't copyright the number unless you have a special presentation of the number. But you got to be careful, though, because when people trademark things, they don't necessarily own it, but they have marked it. Um, in association with who they are and what they do. So if the average person saw that car logo number and thought it was that particular stock car driver, you might, okay, have <laughs> issues. I don't know. I'm, not gonna, I'm just saying is um, when you see these kind of things, step back from them, okay? Yeah. I mean, especially in the holidays, you see a lot of kid stuff coming up and they want, uh -huh. you know, renditions of Bugs Bunny and all these other characters. And it's just... Um, you know, and I think most people are wise enough about the well-known ones, but sometimes they're not as wise about other things. So that's one of the things I always watch out for. I've had really compelling arguments from people about why I should do it. And uh, and in every case, I, I remember a line that my high school band director told me and the others who weren't the best musicians. Uh, <laughs> when in doubt, lay out. If you can't hit that note, don't try it, okay? Because there's other people who can. And it's the same thing here. When something comes in, you're not sure about it. When in doubt, lay out, man. Just, you know, and you know, it's going to be your local colleges. It's going to be pro teams. It's going to be all kinds of stuff that you're going to see that people want, you know, to put on things for gifts. Yeah. And you know, well, my my son is a student at, um, you know, um, Duke University. So <laughs> I'm not putting the Duke logo on anything. You know, I mean, it's it's that's that's not a compelling argument. You know, yeah. it's uh, so and you're going to see a lot of that. So right. you, you do need to be careful about those kind of things. Nice. Well, that, that's great stuff. We've had some great comments uh, going uh, around this. Uh, and, and, you know, go check out the Facebook page to see a lot of those comments. Uh, Jim had mentioned that uh, we actually did have a show. I think it was uh, the end of August uh, where we actually had a copy mark and trademark attorney on the show with us, Gordon Firemark. And uh, he covered a lot of those things you were talking about there, Jimmy. So, uh, you know, uh, it's awesome that you got an attorney because. I'd asked my attorney more than once to be involved in webinars and stuff. He said, absolutely not. He said, my problem is when I give legal advice, people go out and make decisions without talking to me first. And he was afraid to do that. So I, I find that most of them don't want to get there because they're afraid that people will take something they said, make a decision incorrectly. 
So the fact that you had one, how did I miss that? I would have loved to have been, you know, <laughs> Am I not on your mailing list? Did I, uh, did yeah. I make you mad somewhere? <laughs> you actually, yeah. You have to follow us on Facebook. And That's the there problem. Well, yeah. I just, um, we're doing some things at Sawgrass with Facebook, and I just set up a new Facebook account. My other one's kind of cruddy. So uh, it, you, you were the, like the first one I invited in. And uh, I friended you that. right away. So, so. Um, you did. So the reality is now I will go follow you, and I'll make sure that, that I get that because <laughs> I hate that I missed that. Cause yeah. Let me tell you something. I'm, I never say I'm too old, but I don't really feel like going back to college and going to law school at this point in my life. But I have become fascinated with trademark and copyright law. And, you know, I, I would love to actually be an attorney practicing it simply because um, I just find it fascinating. So many gray areas and I've done so yeah. much reading on it and everything. And some of the, some of the cases are just incredible and they're funny. I mean, they're funny too when a judge gets mad at somebody and starts telling them, you know, because I'm reading the actual transcripts of what the judge told somebody. And it's like, that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, well, definitely check that one out, uh, Jimmy. It's Gordon Firemark. And uh, in fact, uh, he's actually working on a new series. He's a really interesting guy. He's, uh, obviously, like I said, a copyright and trademark right. attorney, but uh, I found him through the uh, podcast space and um, he helps podcasters and, and people in kind of a creative world right. kind of protect the, their stuff. So this is perfect for people. So hopefully yep. uh, people checked him out and uh, used his services. They seem very reasonable and uh, um, he was a uh, heck of a guy and lots of great information. So, um, and what you were saying jived with what he said so i think you're on the right track jimmy so he went to one of my seminars he, he, he probably <laughs> sat in it's like i gotta write this down so all well, right I real... took mine from my attorney so that's where i learned there you go there you go there's all nothing right. like getting your own cease and desist so uh you know i know what that's like i also know what it's like to write them because ah, i still stock well, designs so there you go so you've been on both sides and i have yeah. been on both sides i haven't been in Not jail in... yet though <laughs> that's good yeah <laughs> Great to hear that. Um, I want to get to a quick question from one of our listeners here. That's uh, just uh, real quick here. I'm just starting on the sublimation front. Is there any products that does better during the holidays, drink or ornaments, t-shirts? I feel a little overwhelmed. Um, you know, I know we talked earlier about about some things, Jimmy, but do you want to kind of maybe give give her a quick answer to that question from from there, your there no perspective? From me. Uh, <laughs> I think drinkware is definitely at, probably at the top of the list. I mean, you know, we mentioned mugs, but there's all kinds of cool stuff out there. I mean, yeah. the camp mugs are really hot right now. Yeah. Uh, so there, there is, you know, different types of drinkware. The nice thing about drinkware is everybody can use it. I don't drink coffee, but I have coffee mugs. Yeah. You know, I can put other things in coffee mugs like water. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, hot chocolate. Yeah. Um, I mean, those are good. You know, she mentioned t-shirts and, and the, the shirts get to be kind of fun because I mean, it, my wife has like, you know, 10,000, she's not around. So I can say it's like 10,000, the ugly, you know, um, sweatshirt kind of <laughs> things. Right. So, um, but she loves those things and adores them. So, um, I, I think the biggest question though is, is how, what, what's your outlet for selling? Okay. Because you kind of got to match who you're able to sell to with what the products are. You know, if you're able to do really good retail, then you can, you can probably do some cool t-shirts with themes on them and, whatever else but if you really don't have a great retail outlet that one's probably going to fall off the ladder for you uh so i would you know i know you're just starting out so you probably don't have a whole lot of outlets yet but um drinkware definitely everybody buys drinkware you know yeah. that's that's a good safe one it's also the inventory and it's a little easier when you inventory t-shirts you got to keep them in all the different sizes yeah. so and then you never have the right size when you need it you know if you're going to inventory it there's nothing wrong ordering it when you need it i mean i'm not against that but as you get closer to christmas you may find some inventory with your suppliers running low yeah. because they're doing two things number one they're selling a lot for christmas number two they're trying to get rid of inventory by the year end uh because a lot of states still have inventory tax that you got to pay tax on what's in your inventory at the end of the year so you want to be careful they don't run out there but uh, I think those two are pretty, I mean, I think the all the mugs and drinkware is pretty darn safe. You know, cell phone color, covers remain popular. The only trick on cell phone covers is the fact that every cell phone requires a different cover. So, I mean, yeah. it, you really can't inventory it very well. Um, but, and you have to have, you got to make sure there's one available for the phone that somebody has. Yeah. But the beauty of cell phone covers is um, finding someone that has like five grandchildren. 
Okay. Well, they don't need one cell phone cover. They need five because they can put a different cover on when they're visiting each different grandchild, right? So you don't want to go see little Sally with little Joey's uh, picture on your phone. Eh, that's bad. Okay. <laughs> so the reality is, you know, you think about things like that where you try to get people to to buy more than one, um, and always put a date on there, especially on pictures. You tell people, well, what were the dates so you can remember when it was taken? But it really makes it out of date, so they need a new one next year. <laughs> Christmas like stockings it. always do good too, but again. I, are you able to reach the consumer adequately to be able to sell them the Christmas stockings? Yeah. So nice. Good stuff. Jimmy, you mentioned cell phone covers. Um, I wanted to show people this. This is kind of an alternative. Who's to that, that guy with you? I, I don't know. It's the old two regular guys host. We're going to have to fix that picture. We'll, we'll right. scratch him out and put you on there. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um so this is just a, you stick it on the back of your phone. You can stick credit cards and driver's license and stuff in there. And right. um, so it's a little card card koozie, I guess, is what you'd call it or something like that. So um, this will go on any phone. It doesn't matter what brand or variety. Right. So because as as Jim uh, just said, he has a ton of iPhone 4 covers around if anybody needs any. So, <laughs> yeah, um, I see that. I actually know uh, some where there's quite a bit of inventory of those as well. So, <laughs> you know, one of my favorite products for sublimation is fishing lures. Ah, yes. And there's only one dealer that. that I know of that carries them, but there's fishing lures for sublimation. And those are, they make a, I, I'm not sure you could actually fish with them. I haven't played with them. I've only seen them, right? But it makes a great gift to a fisherman that you can actually create a personalized fishing lure. It also makes a pretty cool promotional product for the right type of company as well. So, you know, the, the thing I'm going to suggest to everybody is um, spend some time on the dealer websites. Now, Aaron can tell you that all the dealers carry the same basics, but then every dealer likes to differentiate themselves from another with unique items. Yeah. And that's what you're trying to go through and get those in your head um of you know unique items um you know one of my favorite items that that um i sell is floor mats and um are we allowed to use dealer names on here is sure go for it absolutely okay. well condi has some some nice floor mats have a rubber backing on them and and i'm not saying the other dealers don't i'm just just ones that i've used right and yeah. you know i i deal a lot with boats and marinas and that kind of world and you take it and put somebody's boat name on there and you buy this thing. By the time you buy it and you do your labor and everything else, I, I think it's around 11 or $12 done. I mean, I, the, the mat doesn't cost that much. I mean, just your total, you know, work. This thing's up for 35 to $40 each. I mean, you know, that's so easy. And it makes a great yeah. Christmas gift. I mean, because anybody that's a boater that has a name on their boat, besides a brand name, um, if you give them something with their boat name on there or a picture of their boat or what, man, they love that. I mean, those yeah. are fantastic gift items. And there's some really good markups in there. Nice. Yeah, Jim says he loved the lures. Jim, have you tried to fish with one yet? I, I, I'm trying to figure out if I can go into the tackle business with the uh, with these lures. Nice. Uh, we'll, we'll find out. We'll definitely uh, find out. So good stuff there. All right, Jimmy. Um, so there was a comment that I kind of skipped over. I may have to go back to. Um, let's see here. And I, you can decide whether you want to read this uh, to uh -oh. the podcast audience or As not. Jimmy told his Boston Whaler story. Somebody knows me. <laughs> <laughs> there so, is a story. Do we do we tell that? We're, we're it's running a, it's short a copyright on time. story. I'll tell you real quick. I don't okay. care about time. Um, <laughs> I had a, I still do, I had um, stock designs of different boats uh, for embroidery. And one was a Boston Whaler 17-foot Montauk, which was probably their best-selling boat of all time. It had a very unique look to it. People who, who looked at it knew what it was. We were very careful not to put the name or the logo on there. And one day we, we get a cease and desist from Boston Whaler. And I'm like, for what? I mean, you know, and it, as it turns out, in copyright law, if you go look it up, there is copyrights on vessel, hull, shapes and it was a very unique hole shape and it was very wow. clear in the stock design and what had happened that really made me ill was i was doing all the work for uh boaters world and boaters world at the time was a huge company and we were doing about fifteen thousand, you know personalized shirts a year for which is boat names and images right mm -hmm. they one of the boston whaler, whaler dealers saw it in the boaters world catalog called uh, boston whaler headquarters and said hey, that's a great image. We want to use that for our staff, but we don't have to buy shirts retail. Where do we get that embroidery done? And they said, what embroidery? 
<laughs> so then they trace it down to them and found about us. And instead of working a deal with me where I could have done all their dealer shirts, <laughs> they said, get rid of it, you know, and I got rid of it. I mean, I didn't want to go any further, you know, so I have the attorney, but vessel hull shapes, who would have guessed? Yeah, you know? no kidding. Wow. Interesting. Well, good. Well, thanks for telling that story. That uh, gives people uh, some more insight. Yeah. Like you said, you know, when in doubt, what did you say? Lay, lay off, lay out, lay out, <laughs> lay out rhymes. When in doubt, lay out. Come on. Yeah. Yep, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Okay. All right. So, um, Jimmy, anything uh, else that we need to share? Any other words of wisdom or what's new with you? What, uh, what can we cover here? Um, you know, my new phrase that I'm using in simple phrase, but I want people to remember this because it ties hand in hand with pricing and that's called marketing equals margin. So the better you are at marketing your products, the more better margin you can get out of your products. And so it's pricing is not about a formula. It's about how well you market. So marketing equals margin. Okay. There we go. There's words of wisdom from Jimmy Lamb. We'll, uh, Somebody's got to be uh, graphically inclined out there to put that on something. And uh, oh, 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 wait a minute, I got to trademark that first. Yeah, yeah, just uh, <laughs> hold on, <laughs> get that All trademark right, real quick. Yeah, here, look, here. <laughs> let me call my attorney real quick while we finish this up. Okay, <laughs> okay. and uh, yeah, we'll we do that. Done. All right, guys. Well, everybody, that was uh, awesome uh, stuff from Jimmy on sublimation. Jimmy, I'm going to keep you around so we can uh, get through a couple more things <laughs> here if you don't mind. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I wanted to remind everybody that, uh, in fact, I'm going to. Scroll it across the bottom for those checking out the video here. The Reggie Award nominations are open. We have 10 categories this year. I won't spend the time going through all of them. If you just tuned into last week's show, we went through each and every one of them. But uh, nominations are going to be open until uh, the middle part of November there. And in fact, I can look at the exact date right now here. November 15th will be when the nominations close. So um, you guys control this entire thing. Uh, enter your nominations for people like best industry educator. I, I know a guy sitting right next to me here in the virtual world that might be uh, worthy of a nomination there. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so get on over again, two regular guys, and uh, you'll see a big banner right at the top there that'll take you right to the nomination form, or you can go directly here through this scrolling link. Uh, Jimmy, do you have any events or things on the road here through the end of the year that you want to share with people? Well, let's see. I'm speaking at the U.S. Cutter Open House in Memphis, Tennessee okay. next week. I think that's on Friday and Saturday. And I think that's it for the year. And then, of course, ISS Long Beach you know, comes around the corner there in January. Yeah, quit reminding me of those things. 2019, Jimmy, we're not talking about that yet. But, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> um, here we go. James Orlani, marketing equals margin trademark. <laughs> Did he trademark it? Is that what he's trying to tell I us? Think, I think that's what just happened to you. Yeah, I think um, so. <laughs> uh, real quick for me, I've got uh, Small Business Saturdays that I do every Saturday morning over on my Facebook page at uh, facebook.com slash aaronmontgomery.info. And uh, tomorrow, Eric Campbell is actually going to join me. And we're going to talk about... Uh, SEO and voice search and how that's changing the SEO game. So uh, looking forward to chatting with Eric about that tomorrow morning, 1130 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, uh, Jimmy James says he will sell that trademark to you. Jimmy. Thanks, James. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, all right, Jimmy. Well, um, I've got five things to do here and uh, then I'm going to wrap it up. So uh, you're welcome to hang around for that or, or okay. you can get on your merry way if you'd like. Either either is fine well, by I'll me. see how you are trying to get rid of me. Right <laughs> never, never. But, uh, but I told you it would only be an hour. So I didn't want to uh, steal any more of your two time. Minutes left. And you said we started two minutes late. So it's actually four minutes late. All right, perfect. All right, well, let's do five things then. And uh, again, uh, Eric Campbell brought this to us. Uh, if anybody wants to provide five things, certainly reach out to us, comment. You know, really the whole goal of five things is just to get five things out in the world that uh, start a conversation. And uh, Do that to be family friendly? I have to be able to read them and not have bleeps <laughs> on the podcast world. That's the... Okay. So family friendly, not bleeping, you know, Got somewhere it. in between. Got it. Gotcha. All right. So anyhow, if anybody wants to share these things, definitely reach out to us at two regular guys. Let us know. We'll get it up there. We'll share your information, share a link, whatever, whatever you want. Like I said, Eric Campbell is bringing you this information this morning. He, he can be found at ericcampbell.com. 
Uh, five things you should do to successfully finish 2018. Number one, set and share your holiday deadlines and closures now. Uh, really good point here, Eric. Uh, in fact, I missed it in a comment uh, earlier when we were talking about sublimation gotchas and pitfalls. Somebody mentioned that, uh, let's see if I can go back and find this here real quick. That makes for good radio as I'm scrolling. But uh, um, somebody mentioned that they tell people that if they want something delivered by Christmas, they have to have the order in by November 15th. So um, set a deadline. So Eric continues and says, set a deadline for orders to deliver deliver by the 25th of December and make sure current customers are well aware. If you haven't posted closures and delays for the upcoming two months, do it now. Uh, I think that's a really great point. Uh, I'm gonna piggyback my own personal opinion on there with where the 25th of December falls this year. Be very careful with the shipping companies. My thought is they are going to be very late. Um, don't expect things to get delivered on Monday or Tuesday. The 25th falls on a Wednesday this year. So um, try to get everything there that Friday before. So you don't have mad customers on the, uh, when you come back from holiday break that they did not get their product in time. So that's number one, set and share your holiday deadlines and closures. Number two, promote and plan sales, events, promotions, and marketing into January. Though there's classically some seasonality for industry, some of it is created by letting off the gas into, into and through the holidays. Plan and prepare now before the final rush hits so you can have continuous sales and promotions to bring customers back in the new year. Think two months ahead. Number three, get ready for your final yearly review. What gets measured gets managed. You need to calculate your profits and costs for the year to understand your performance. If you haven't been keeping track, take this time to commit and set up systems to do it next year. Number four, make your final equipment purchases for the tax year. With your initial review in hand, you know what you're working with. Get ready to get those last purchases in to count for 2018. This is the time to get those last deductions for the tax year. Number five, plan to take some time for yourself and your family. Hustle is great, but we hustle to live, not live to hustle. Make sure to enjoy the holidays when the orders are cut off and it's time to celebrate. That's why we prepare now, prime the pump and do what you can so you can take your break and be ready to get right back to the grind when you uh, get to the shop thereafter. And that's uh, number five is a great point. Uh, I know for me, go super hard through the holidays and, uh, pretty much spend some time sleeping and then really enjoying New Year's. <laughs> so Let there's me five add things. That real, real Please. quick, a simple thing. Um, if you're new and you're starting a business and operating from your house, try very hard to have that business in a room where you can close the door and walk away instead of spread it all over the house because you actually need to do that every single day. There needs to be a point where you shut the door and leave it behind till tomorrow. Nice, nice. Uh, a couple quick comments here that uh, I, I uh, wanted to get to here. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, Greg Kitson mentioned UPS and FedEx are already suspending guarantees. Yep, they they did that last year as well, uh, if I remember right. Uh, Jeff mentioned UPS freight likely striking and uh, could potentially have some ripple effects for the holiday season. Uh, Mary Mary Ann corrected me, and I apologize for getting uh, the 25th wrong. It's actually on a Tuesday, not a Wednesday, like I mentioned. So. Thank you for uh, checking my cal <laughs> calendar for me. Um, and then Marianne also said number five is very important. Um, so very good stuff. Thanks for everybody in their comments. Eric, separation is a big deal. Jimmy is right. Again, Jimmy's right. I love this. Everybody, everybody yeah, agrees you know, with you today. Once, once in a while. <laughs> All right, Jimmy. Well, thank you. We have come to the close of another show. Jimmy, I really appreciate you joining me and, and bailing us out. Great info as always. Uh, and uh, make sure that uh, we get a chance to get you on the show for an actual show and not just yeah, doing an our bailout all this time. Show. Is that what you're saying? A real show? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> we've uh, we've had you bail us out lots of times so it's only fair that we actually give back to you so <laughs> but i haven't had to bail you out of jail not yet right there's time I've done that for others but not for you not not yet yeah okay <laughs> hopefully we'll keep it that way yes um, I want to thank our show producer, Eric Campbell, and you, again, find him at ericcampbell.com. Also like to thank our show sponsors, the Specialty Graphics Imaging Association and Equipment Zone. We appreciate your support. 
Um, next week, Jimmy, I'm going to be chatting. Uh, Terry and I will. Hopefully, Terry will be back, or maybe you'll be back with me. We'll see how this goes down. Um, but we'll be chatting with Allison J. Prince about e-commerce. She has built four successful multi-million dollar online businesses. So we're going to find out some of her secrets. Uh, she has to go off to one of her Facebook Live sessions after our show. So we're going to be starting that one actually 30 minutes early next week. So uh, 9.30 Central, 10.30 Eastern for those of you checking it out. And... Uh, I think that'll do it for today, Jimmy. So uh, until next week, tune in then. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash two regular guys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash two regular guys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, two regular guys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.